This conference will now be recorded. Hello guys, today we'll speak about disease and the ways of disease can happen. As you know, a disease is something that makes you ill. There are different types of disease. One of them are infectious disease. First of all, you have to know that disease caused by pathogens are called infectious disease because the pathogen that causes the disease can be passed from one person to another person. In this lesson, you will be able to determine the term pathogen. You should describe how pathogens, bacteria, and viruses can cause disease and also explain some of the methods used by the body to protect us against pathogens. In the picture, it shows the salmonella bacteria on a piece of roast beef. What's a microorganism, first of all? As you know, microbe means very small. Organism means living thing. In case of pathogen, it's a disease-causing microorganism. Pathogens are a type of microorganism, and they cause disease. But not all microorganisms are pathogens. There are some microorganisms which once are used in industry in, a, in order to make a yogurt or in order to make a bread. That is why these microorganisms are usable. But those ones which ones are causing a disease are called infectious disease. But how do pathogens make us feel ill? There are main, three main types of pathogen. One of them is bacteria, another one viruses, and the last one is a fungi. Bacteria is a very small organism. It can reproduce rapidly in your body. It will make you ill by damaging cells and producing toxins. If it will come to the structure of bacteria, bacteria, it's made up from a cell wall and a cell membrane. It has a cytoplasm and it has a chromosome. Inside of chromosome, you are having genetic material which is passed from one generation to another generation. It doesn't have a true nucleus. That's why it's called prokaryotic cell. In the picture, it shows the salmonella food poisoning bacteria. How do they look in magnified form? Bacteria are living cells. They release toxins or poisons that make you feel bad. They can multiply very rapidly. Examples include food poisoning, cholera, and gonorrhea. When it will come to the viruses, viruses are having a protein code. They are not counted as living organisms due to the fact that they don't have nucleus, they don't have cell membrane, and they don't have cytoplasm. They're having a tail in order to move, and they're having genetic material in the form of the DNA and RNA. Many infectious diseases are caused by viruses. Most viruses are so small that they cannot be seen with a light microscope. Viruses cause diseases such as polio, chickenpox in humans, but viruses can infect all kinds of organisms. Viruses also can infect bacteria as well as. Viruses have a simple structure, an outer protein code that protects the genetic material inside. They contain none of the other structures found in the cells of living organisms and cannot carry out life processes on their own. That's why they are classified as non-living organisms. Many scientists argue that viruses are not true organisms even. When a virus infects a cell, it takes over the cell's genetic material and makes the cell produce more viruses. The new virus break open the cell membrane and escape to infect other cells. This cell damage is a part of what makes us feel ill. This is a picture taken with the microscope of a virus attacking a cell. Viruses are not living cells. They have no nucleus, as we have mentioned before. They are having just DNA inside of a protein coat. They are even smaller than the bacteria. They can only reproduce inside of our cells. The virus enters the cells, makes lots of copies, and then they burst out of the cell into the bloodstream. Examples include like influenza, colds, HIV or AIDS, and chickenpox. Let's classify this following disease if they are caused by bacteria or viruses. As you can see, right now we can see which type of disease are caused by bacteria and which type of disease are caused by viruses. 
Bacteria do their damage outside of the cell. They do not need to get into the cells to cause the damage, but viruses do their damage inside of the cell. They must get into the host cell to cause the damage. That's why they are not considered as living organisms, as they cannot live outside of the cell. Here are bacteria and viruses. How do they work? In case of bacteria, they are releasing toxins, which is actually making us feel ill. But in case of viruses, they are inserting the cell and releasing their genetic information in a such way they are actually bursting the cell. If we will compare the size of viruses and bacteria, it will look like this. You are having the size of your rat, for example. A fungi is the size of a football. A bacteria will be the size of a bus, and the smallest one, a virus, will be the size of a football. What are the ways in which infectious diseases are spread to this man? First of all, it's a droplet infection. It can be also by direct contact, as well as contaminated food and drink. It can pass also through a break in your skin as well as. Droplet infections, for example, a flu. In case of direct contact, you can have glandular fever. Contaminated food and drink can be caused by food poisoning. Through a break in your skin, it can be cephalococcus bacteria. How does our body protect us? Most of the time, we don't feel unwell. Our bodies are really good at keeping out pathogens most of the time. But where might pathogens enter the body? As you know, we are having natural barriers, such as chemicals in trees, which ones are destroying microorganisms. Or your skin is the best example of natural barriers, because your skin produces chemicals that make it hard for microorganisms to grow. If microorganisms get in, get in through your mouth, as it is in the stomach, hydrochloric acid, as you know, will destroy most of them. The skin is a physical barrier for microorganisms as well as the human body has barriers to stop harmful microorganisms getting inside of our body. But what happens if the pathogens manage to pass through the barriers? In this case, we are having different barriers, which is called white blood cells. Internal defense mechanism is the action of white blood cells. As you know, white blood cells are part of blood cells, which is protecting our body. There are three methods of defense used by white blood cells. Ingesting pathogens, which is caused phagocytosis, producing antibodies, and producing antitoxins. In case of phagocytosis, one type of white blood cells is called a phagocyte, which this type of white blood cells are responsible for killing bacteria by surrounding and engulfing them. They do not eat the pathogens. While you are having a bacteria in your organism, phagocytes are detecting them, surrounding them, engulfing, taking them in, and after that, they are losing an enzymes which will break down the cell and cell membrane of a bacteria. In case of antibodies, there are lymphocytes that are responsible for the production of antibodies, which will protect your body. Lymphocytes, these white blood cells, are responsible for killing bacteria by producing antibodies. And at the same time, they can also produce antitoxins to neutralize the toxins, which is released. Some of your white blood cells keep watch for foreign cells. These white blood cells make chemicals called antibodies. These chemicals sticking to the foreign cells. As you know, if we are having a microorganism which is invading your body, all microorganisms are having their own markers on the outside, which is called antigens, and which one we'll discuss in the next slides. Because in case of antibodies which stick to the outer part of these microorganisms, other white blood cells can identify these microorganisms and they will engulf these microorganisms to which one antibodies stick to. Each different type of microorganism has a different type of antibody to be produced. Antibodies are Y-shaped proteins made by white blood cells. An antibody can only bind to the microorganisms that has it to be produced. They are specific. Don't forget about it. Antibodies are specific to the microbes that they destroy, like keys, if you can see from the following picture. These are molecules which are shaped to fit onto invaders' antigens. 
they stick them together so they can't move and they can be engulfed by phagocytes. Antigens. The cells in our body contain antigens. These are your body's way of telling which cells are your own and which cells are unwanted invaders. Bacteria or viruses have different shaped antigens from yours and your body can tell that they don't belong. A different antibody is needed for each microorganism, as we have mentioned below. Each white blood cell makes only one kind of antibody. Only the correctly shaped antibody can fight each microorganism. White blood cells recognize the foreign microorganisms. They make the right antibodies to stick to the microorganisms. A small number of these white blood cells stay in the blood after the first infection. If you meet the real disease, microorganisms, the antibodies unit, are made very quickly. The microorganisms are destroyed before they can make you ill. Besides having white blood cells, if we are already infected, we can protect ourselves and we can heal by using antibiotics. Antibiotics damage bacteria and eventually kill them, for example, penicillin. Different antibiotics kill different types of bacteria. Each type of antibiotic interferes with the bacteria's life process, for example, making a cell wall. They do not kill viruses, and this is important for you to know. However, they don't affect human cells also. Antibiotics have no effect on virus. You have to know that when you have a disease caused by viruses, you cannot use antibiotics in order to heal yourself. Also, we can protect our organism by using external methods such as antiseptics. Antiseptics or disinfectants kill bacteria outside the body, but are too poisonous to be used inside of the body. In your books match up the keywords to its definition. As you know, in case of pathogen, it's a disease-causing microorganism. Virus, made up of protein, not a living cell. Bacteria, a single-celled living organism. White blood cells produce antibodies to fight pathogens. And in case of phagocytosis, the process of ingesting pathogens. Besides having infectious disease, a lot of diseases also can be caused by deficiency of some vitamins or nutrients. For example, if you are having vitamin A deficiency, in that case, the name of disease will be night blindness. In case of night blindness, there is a poor vision, loss of vision in darkness, night, sometimes complete loss of vision. When we are having lack of vitamin B1, the name of disease is called beriberi. The main symptoms of beriberi disease are weak muscles and very little energy to work. The deficiency of vitamin C causes scurvy disease, which, while which can observe bleeding gums, wounds take longer time to heal. During the deficiency of vitamin D, rickets is formed. During rickets, we are having bones, soft bones, and they can be bent. Commonly, in case of teenagers and in case of Childs they are suffering from this disease. Calcium also related to the vitamin D because vitamin D is causing our organism to absorb calcium. If we don't have enough calcium, rickets disease will be formed. Bone and tooth decay will happen, which will cause weak bones and tooth decay. In case of when we have lack of iron, it will cause anemia and will feel tiredness and weakness. If we have deficiency of Proteins, we are having disease which is called Kvashiorka. Besides deficiency disease, we can have also lifestyle disease. But what will cause the lifestyle disease? Certain habits, behaviors, and practices such as poor eating, habits, inactivity, or smoking. Factors that we cannot control such as age, gender, and heredity. In case of lifestyle disease, we are having lung cancer, heart disease. Why lung cancer can be formed? Because people are having too many cigarettes, they are smoking, they are drinking, and that's why it is causing lung cancer disease. In case of heart diseases, such as uh, higher blood pressure, when they're eating too much fats, too much fat saturated fats, when they don't do exercise, when they don't do even simple exercises at home, you're having a lot of fat, uh, saturated fats, which is uh, collected on the wall of your blood vessels and which is causing actually in case of adults high blood pressure and it's also one kind of lifestyle disease. What about inherited disease? As you know we are getting genetic information from our parents. 
But where, first of all, this genetic information are stored? It's stored inside of the cell. We are having a nucleus. Instead of nucleus, we are having chromosomes. Each body cell have 23 pairs of chromosomes. The only cell which is existing in our body and doesn't have 23 pairs, but actually have 23 chromosomes, is gametes. And that is why when we are inheriting this genetic information from our parents, we are getting 23 chromosomes from each of them, from mom and dad. And while one of them is a carrier of disease, or if they are having this disease in their genes, we will inherit it from them as well as. Inherited diseases are including sickle cell diseases or hemophilia. It's a fault in the DNA genetic material in a cell that changes how the cell works.